I'm going back to my book, The Story of Philosophy by Will Durant, uh, trying to find the two passages that said that uh, you need to be connected to your heart and your mind in order to make a good decision. Um, and that um, some circumstances call for compassion, others for power. You, it's usually a mixture of both, just as with the heart and the mind. Um, and I just wanted to find the, pa the passages. And naturally, I couldn't. So what I did was I turned to page 234. And sometimes, like, I'm getting weirdly uh, religious. It's like... I I can think it through logically, and I go, "This is nonsense, it's not religious." You're finding this because you look for it, but I don't think that there's anything more on my mind the last two weeks than precisely this. Okay, and here it is. Uh, this is Spinoza. Spinoza, it was the is the greatest Jew that ever lived. Seriously. And the people most uh, gent the Europeans most gentle to the Jews were the Dutch. Anyway, so Spinoza believes it is a simple matter to show that hatred, perhaps because it trembles on the verge of love, can be more easily overcome by love than by by reciprocated hate. Okay, I can tell you. Uh, that I have hatred for people that doesn't trum tremble at all on the verge of love. I swear to God, man, I am not on the verge of falling in love with certain politicians. <clears throat> okay. Anyway. So here's the thing. Hatred is fed on the feeling that it is returned. Wow. Wow. So he's saying that you can't hate somebody who doesn't hate you. Okay, I know that there's a class of intellect that hates my class of intellect. Uh, but when I'm talking about my hatred for certain politicians, that's personal. That guy doesn't know I exist. There's a whole bunch of them. They don't know I exist. But I hate him personally, right? Even the word hate, okay, let me, I think I've said this before, all he would have to do is show some decency, and I would quit hating him. Immediately. I swear to God, I can even feel it. I wouldn't go so far as to say love or like, uh, maybe as a uh, French teacher. Okay, probably really okay, right? I wouldn't want to share a beer with him or anything like that. But, okay, I would kind of... No, I like the guy, okay? I like him already. Uh, so, okay, so how is this? Okay, so this relates to the thing because um, everybody's going around reciprocating hatred with hatred, and it's not going to work. Because, you know, just according to this, we really do hate each other. So if I wanted people uh, of a kind of uh, political persuasion to quit hating me, the very first thing I should do is give that person an indication that I don't hate them. And the best way you could do that is the, with the Christian model and open your arms up in love. It is the only answer. I don't know that, that this meaning can be derived from uh, the story of philosophy by Will Durant talking about a Jewish guy that lived 400 years ago in Amsterdam, but I'm pretty sure uh, that I can do it. Uh, they're not going to open up their arms and say, oh my God, we love the... Who are we? Uh, they might open up their arms in love of uh, Jordan Peterson fans, probably. Maybe. No, no not really. Uh, the, the, the nobody encourages them to. 
not that they are a monolithic group or anything like that, but they're not. Oh my God. I think uh, it's obvious what I mean. Um, okay. Um, okay. Like, uh, I don't think they're going to come out and say that they love Janice Fiamengo admirers. That's not going to happen. They might love you if they don't know what you think. They're not going to love you if they know that you're a Janice Fiamengo uh, super fan. I really doubt it. Really doubt it. Uh. I'm just going to read what it... I haven't read this for a while. Okay. Like, I don't know what I'm going to read next. Okay. To hate is to acknowledge our inferiority and our fear. We do not hate a foe who we are confident we can overcome. Inferiority and fear. Yeah, I'm definitely afraid of these people. Uh, but no, I definitely don't think I'm inferior to them. Uh, I am inferior uh, to the person I'm talking about in precisely zero ways. Intellectually, zero. Am I afraid? Yes. Um, uh, intellectually, he is uh, the least creative person that uh, I've ever come across. He who wishes to revenge an injury, in injuries by reciprocal hatred will live in misery, of course. But he who endeavors to drive away hatred by means of love fights with pleasure and confidence. He resists equally one or many men and scarcely needs at all the help of fortune. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, right now, uh, fight with a lot of pleasure, a lot of confidence, but I don't, if, yeah, I do, uh, I'm fighting with love because it's a love for humanity. So, yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> this is uh, scarcely believable. Uh, minds are conquered not by arms but by greatness of soul we think we are most ourselves when we are most passionate whereas it is then we are most passive caught in some ancestral torrent of impulse or feeling and swept on to a precipitate reaction which meets only part of the situation because without thought only part of a situation can be perceived. Okay, so that's that is what I was looking for. That is exactly what I was looking for. Uh this has been repeated a billion times. But yeah, if you're just acting on feeling, then you're a slave to your impulse. It just said more eloquently here. Uh the instincts are magnificent as a driving force, but dangerous as guides. For but we, what we may call the individualism of the instinct, each of them seeks its own fulfillment, regardless of the good of the whole personality. Okay, now that is too close to home. Um, I think at some point in a person's life, they sh really should, for, at least for a certain amount of time, so long as their instincts aren't violent, but rather probably the exact opposite, have some uh, period of time in their life when they are truly wild. Truly wild. I think it's more appropriate, obviously, obviously for uh, younger people uh, in their 20s, I would say. But, no, I don't think that that hurts so much. Um, it depends, obviously. Um, but it's so easy to imagine. If, if the uh, instinct is for drugs or for violence, um, yeah, then that can go very badly, obviously. 
wind up being incredibly bad for the whole personality. <clears throat> and so can the other kind of instincts as well. But um, Okay, the, the problem that with the other kind of instinct is that it certainly uh, brings you in contact with other human beings, doesn't it? And in a, what can sometimes be a, an extremely happy circumstance. So, I, okay, I remember um, I knew a girl very well. Uh, she was a Japanese prostitute. And what she said was is that sex was just people sharing the excitement of being alive. That's what she said. That's what she thought. And whether or not that eventually had a negative impact on her uh, personality as a whole, there's no question about that. But she was like an extremist. So I just thought that was the most a uh, beautiful way I've ever de heard it described. She, th she thought that it was a way of sharing the excitement of being alive with other people. It's the best, best thing I've ever heard. Best comment I've ever heard on the subject. And it was coming from a person who, you know, a lot of people wouldn't respect. I promise you that. I guess I... I can't bring myself to say that I didn't respect her. She's one of the best friends I've ever had. For sure. Um, what people who know anything about that kind of thing will say is, is that if that kind of a woman is your friend, then she's really your friend. She's with you because she likes you. You can count on that 100%. She doesn't need you for anything. Nothing. And she's hanging around with you. That's a good friend. And um, we lost contact because someone uh, really third party to everything uh, wouldn't uh, pass my phone number because they thought that uh, because I was married, it wasn't appropriate that we I contacted her. There was nothing romantic about our friendship at that point like I think she had been married and divorced and uh, just like we you know at some point you, you kind of say like you know okay that was nice but that was in the past and we both know that so I don't bug me I'm not gonna bug you okay like just like it's almost like you don't even have to say it but anyway other people didn't look at it like that and I lost the best friend I've ever had in my life I, sw I swear to God, that was the best person I ever met. The most honest. Okay. Yeah. I think that's enough. Um, yeah. Uh, this is, you would think, would come from the Christians. But uh, the answer to the political mess we're in is love. Love and... Uh, honesty and critical thinking. Otherwise, just forget it. You just forget it anyway, actually. I mean, there's just so many things. It's just so twisted. Like, just... It's been gone forever already. Like, if you think that uh, Canada is a democracy and that there aren't other countries determining everything that happens to us, you, uh, wow, you're crazy. Honestly, just completely crazy. The only thing, the only thing that Canada can hope for is that that other country is too busy and that the citizens of that other country really are pretty phenomenally good people and they'll decide not to treat us that badly. But we're living at the mercy of another country. It have been for decades, really.